theory of international trade. This theory was given by Professor Adam Smith. It is a simple 2 by 2 model in which there are two countries and two commodities. And there is also one resource and the classical economists considered the resource to be labor. The succeeding economists, they considered any common resource, need not necessarily be labor. Now, we assumed the total resource for both the countries to be 200 tons. There are two countries, Ghana and South Korea, and two commodities, cocoa and rice. Ghana requires 10 tons of resource to produce one ton of cocoa. So, production of cocoa in Ghana is 200 upon 10, which is equal to 20 tons. Ghana requires 20 units to produce 1 ton of rice. So, the production of rice, we will calculate in the same way, the total resource 200 divided by 20, which is equal to 10. So, Ghana can either produce, produce 20 tons of cocoa or 10 tons of rice. In the same way, we calculate the production in South Korea. Let us assume South Korea requires 40 units for cocoa production. So, cocoa production in South Korea is 200 upon 40, which is equal to 5. South Korea requires 10 units for the rice production. So, rice production in South Korea is 200 upon 10, which is equal to 20. Now, we tabulate the total production in both the countries in the table. First column, we take countries which are Ghana and South Korea. Second column is for cocoa and the third column is for rice. Ghana can either produce 20 tons of cocoa or 10 tons of rice. Now, you have to remember it is either or. Because for production of, Ghana, uh, production of cocoa, Ghana is using entire 200 tons of resource. So, either it can produce 20 tons of cocoa or 10 tons of rice. Similarly, South Korea can either produce 5 tons of cocoa or 20 tons of rice. So, it is either or. From this, theory, from this table, you can clearly understand that Ghana has absolute advantage in the production of cocoa, while South Korea has absolute advantage in the production of rice. Now, let us assume initially there is no trade. When there is no trade, both the countries have to produce both the goods. And let us also assume that both the countries use 50% of the resource for the production of cocoa and 50% of the resource for the production of rice. So, what we do is we divide the numbers in the earlier table with 2. So, we get 20 upon 2 is equal to 10 and so on. So, production of cocoa in Ghana is 10 units or 10 tons and production of rice in Ghana is 5 tons. Production of cocoa in South Korea is 2.5 tons and production of rice in South Korea is 10 tons and the total production is 12.5 and 15 respectively. Now, if both these countries start trading, Ghana will produce cocoa because it has absolute advantage in cocoa production. South Korea will produce rice because it has absolute advantage in the rice production. So, Ghana will specialize in production of cocoa and South Korea will specialize in the rice production. And the total production comes to 2020. Now, Ghana will not produce any rice or the production of rice is zero in Ghana. Similarly, South Korea will not produce any cocoa because they are utilizing their total resource of 200 tons for the production of the commodity in which they have absolute advantage. Now, 
we calculate gains in production when there was no trade the total world production of cocoa was 12.5 tons when there is trade it is 20 tons so gain in production is 20 minus 12.5 is equal to 7.5 similarly the gain in production of rice is 5 5 tons now coming to consumption after trade Now, Ghana, which has produced 20 tons of cocoa, will exchange 6 tons with South Korea. So, it is left with 14 tons for its own consumption. So, it is consuming 14 tons of cocoa and giving 6 tons to South Korea. In return, it is getting 6 tons of rice. So, we have the table for consumption after trade and the total comes to 2020 for the two goods. So, whatever is produced is consumed. The theory is based on some of the assumptions. The assumptions are only two countries and two goods which we have already seen zero transportation costs because if transportation costs are included one problem is the model will remain will not remain simple it will become complicated and another problem is the advantage which countries are having may disappear with the addition of transport cost There are similar prices and values of both the goods in both the countries. Resources are mobile between goods within countries but not across countries. What this means is resources can move easily from cocoa production to rice production and vice versa. But they do not move from Ghana to South Korea or from South Korea to Ghana. There are constant returns to scale. That is, there are neither increasing returns to scale nor diminishing returns to scale. But in reality, this is very rare situation. Companies either have increasing returns to scale or diminishing returns to scale. And the last assumption is the fixed stock of resources. It means that the resources are fixed 200 tons. Now, sometimes in reality that new resources get invented and the sometimes the existing resources may be uh, may be lost out due to some reasons, may be the used of totally or may be depleted. Like in US some time back shale gas was found and it impacted the prices of oil in the world very much. So the new resources may be invented. In India also ONGC continuously keeps exploring for the oil reserves. So, this is also not a realistic assumption, but of course, it is a very simple model. Thanks for watching. Any questions or any comments, uh, you can put it in the comment box.